go behind the scenes of something very special. Join us in the countdown to the unveiling of the new Doctor. With the Doctor about to burst on our screens, our cameras went behind the scenes to witness the launch of the new series. It's a brand new series. I thought it was brilliant. There was a bit of everything. There was a bit of drama, romance, humour. After eight months of filming, the new series was shown to an expectant press and our cameras were there to gauge their reaction. It's been my life for eight months. Um, I've done nothing else. The man in the TARDIS hot seat is Christopher Eccleston, who has brought the Doctor back to life after nine years of time travel away from our screens. And with a new Doctor comes a new assistant. It has actually been one massive adventure this show. Now we're in trouble. As the filming for the new series draws to a close, Russell T. Davis, the man responsible for bringing back the Doctor, can finally pause for breath. It is the thing I am most proud of in my entire career. I absolutely love this show, and I hope you do too. And Russell is no stranger to the small screen. I return to the city, soon to become... a legend. It's not like I had a choice. I was born like this. If you're the almighty, then it's all your idea. Hands up anyone who thinks you've got it right. I admire him so much, Russell, as a writer, and that's why I'm here doing Doctor Who. It's because of Russell. And action! Bringing the Doctor back was daunting for fans old and new. When I got the part of Rose, as great as it is to be part of the um, Doctor Who history, it's also quite scary. I don't think either of us will ever have a show like this again because there is just something about the words Doctor Who that bring people alive. Light up, light up, as if you have... Chris, as one of our finest actors, brings so much new to the part and for a whole generation of kids watching, there's going to be a completely new Doctor that's going to be absolutely theirs. That generation will own him. The last time the Doctor was seen on our screens, Paul McGann was in control of the TARDIS. I quite like him. He's a bit like a puppy. <laughs> runs around, yapping and sniffing and anything. In the 1990s, as men behaved badly on our televisions, Paul McGann behaved impeccably as the Eighth Doctor. I shall prove to you the Eye of Harmony is open. Look at this. Yes. <laughs> you see already the molecular structure of the planet is changing. I'm going to need an ambulance as soon as possible. This is Dr. Grace Holloway. At first in subtle ways, but soon in catastrophic ways. <laughs> As the 90s drew to a close, no one knew what was in store for the Doctor in the new millennium. Millennium Bug. Millennium Bug. Millennium Bug. The millennium Bug. Paul McGann comes along and it's, it's on Millennium Eve. It's set on December 31st, 1999. And actually, it's quite funny, at the end of a century, you get a costume that's actually a distillation of what you imagine Doctor Who to be. It's foppish and Edwardian and, and old-fashioned. And it's a beautiful, beautiful costume. And it, it's like the Doctor summing up himself at the end of the century, then. Ooh. It's in a cubby hole above the pea. Scott, why a police box? Its cloaking device got stuck on a previous misadventure. I get like this. <laughs> I thought he was full of heart, full of warmth. I thought he was charismatic. He's funny. He's gentle, and 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 there are certain moments in there that I think are some of the best moments of Doctor Who ever made. And nine years on, the Doctor is back. 
Right then, Rose Tyler, you tell me, where do you want to go? Backwards or forwards in time? It's your choice. What's it going to be? <sighs> forwards. If Doctor Who's going to work, then let's go for it. Hold on. Let's send him into the far future and have spaceships and a million monsters and, you know, we live or die by that. <laughs> It's not long before Rose gets her first taste of alien life. I've had my chin completely taken away, and look at the difference. Look how thin I am. Quick! And even the humans look different. It's gone with a planet about to explode. At least it'll be quick. Well, the thing with aliens in Doctor Who is there's, there's a danger of relying on them visually to just think if we just roll them in with three heads, that's enough. It isn't. They all have a relationship with the Doctor and with Rose and, uh, and there are opportunities for great actors to come in and do great things for the series. Ladies and gentlemen and trees and multiforms, the lady... Cassandra O'Brien, Doc Delta 17. Cassandra is the last human and is effectively a bit of stretched skin on a frame with a mouth and eyes, um, voiced by Zoe Wanamaker. My father was a Texan. My mother was from the Arctic desert. They were born on the earth and they were the last to be buried in its soil. We were wondering when we first read the script how we were going to achieve her, and I think as conversations with um, the executives and the writer, Russell T. Davis, sort of went on. They wanted something very high quality. She had to be really good. So the only way we could actually do her is to make a fully CGI animated character. Um, and she appears for about four minutes in the 45 minute episode of screen time, which is quite a lot. How many operations have you had? 708. Next week, it's 709. I'm having my blood bleached. Is that why you wanted a word? You could be flattered. The Doctor's taken on many forms, with a trio of time travellers in the 80s alone. As records became CDs and notes became coins, the change from Baker to Davison held no barriers for Peter. I always liked playing Doctor Who as, as playing in the street, you know, when you're a kid, where you fantasise about saving the universe, and suddenly, you know, at the age of 29, or whenever I, I started playing the part, you know, there I was, actually, saving the universe every week. It was fantastic. Peter Davison, it's sort of, it's sort of a preppy look, it's the early 80s, it's a little bit studenty. I mean, he wears sneakers. I think he's the first Doctor ever to wear sneakers, and they're, they're quite funny trousers. It's the sort of thing students would have worn, uh, possibly on a rag week. Haven't you got that thing started yet? Give us a chance, Mike. Yeah, we've made some toast. <laughs> <laughs> While the young ones were amusing and Pat was posting, this bleached blonde doc was pushing the boundaries as Doctor Number Five. I came up with the idea for my outfit, which was my stripy trousers and sort of beige. Nice, it was a vision in beige, really. Um, and I thought it looked rather silly until I saw Colin Baker's outfit. <laughs> 